Hey guys, let's get to the point. If you order a card that recently spiked, you are taking a risk that the store will not send you that recently spiked card. The more a card spikes, the less likely the store will give to you because they can sell the card at a new higher price, probably to someone who's local. So, is this correct for a store to do? No. The store should honor the price. But has this happened a million times? Yes. So as a buyer, when you, once you see Jace, Bloodbraid Elf, unbanned, you can be assured that a large majority of these stores are not going to ship out the card to you. A, they might know beforehand. And that's a totally different discussion that we'll have a little later. And I will make, I will tell you this. Bitter Blossom, they knew. Because that, I have never seen a chart like Bitter Blossom. The only thing that would make sense for Bitter Blossom was for it to be unbanned. Blood Braid Elf, I think they knew that one. Not as much as Jace, but once Jace was in the Eternal Masters, I think, or not, uh, he was in Eternal Masters, but he's now also in Masters 25. It didn't take very much to put one and one together, and even without inside information, you can probably assume that he would be unbanned. Now, let's get to the point. Um, if a card is sold and then a refund is issued, there's many excuses. The seller can say this actually sold last night in the store, but the employee didn't take it out of the inventory. It's actually really annoying and I'm really sorry about that. I know this day is absolute chaos and madness. Who is to argue that this card sold in the store? The store owner does not need to provide evidence. They could do trade credit. Who knows? And it might actually have happened. It might have happened where, you know, they're playing late and then, oh my gosh, I got an unbanned. All right, let me buy it with a sticker right there. But should you be selling inventory in your store at the same time as you're selling online? Question mark, question mark. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that because you would face the same issue every single time, wouldn't you? If something is purchased in your store, even if it's not Jace, and then someone purchased it online, you would just have to get your refund again and again and again. So unless your store doesn't sell very many cards and it's once in a blue moon that is sold this Jace, this would not be an ideal model. It would not be, let's keep all of our cards on sale in the store and also online. Now, I know many of you will disagree with that, and but that's my personal preference, right? I'm allowed to have that. So let's talk a little bit more about, so this is a foil Jace, probably from the original set. Uh, refund will appear. Uh, I would take four business days for the actually showed by employee. Didn't. Okay, so he read it again. Interesting, and it will continue to happen. A lot of you are under the impression that you can make money from an overnight spike. But by the time that you know that Blood Raid Elf and Jace is unbanned, too many other people know that. Let's start with the list. All the big stores know this. Card Kingdom, Star City Games, Channel Fireball, they all know this. It has to be part of their business model to know this. It would be a devastating mistake for them to sell or have any inventory available at the time, so they know. And beyond that, the individual buyers know. Uh, there is a story of someone in I think GP Toronto buying up every Jace they can get their hands on because he knew. And that's what I would do too. I would just trade and buy every Jace I could get my hands on because it is very obvious that Jace would be unbanned given that we need to sell more magic products, uh, defect magic product, of course. The best type. This is not how to do a buyout. Uh, this is not how to... <laughs> 
buying the card right on the 12th, as soon as the ban list is un- announced, is you're not going to receive the card nowadays. It's not. The store margins are very tight, and reputation doesn't go very far anymore. Why care about your store's reputation when your people are going to buy from the cheapest vendor anyway? Reputation means very little, especially on online on a platform like TCG player and you can always use the same excuse we sold it in the store no one updated inventory we apologize oh we sold this in the store no one updated the inventory we apologize by saying that over and over again you will be a master at MTG finance in your store no one will be able to pull the wool over your face no eyes well face anyway my point is very simple do not buy cards the night they spike. Because although you keep your fingers crossed and you're hoping that foil jays is sent your way, it will never be. Now, maybe some stores are nice, but that is the exception. The majority of these stores are living paycheck to paycheck. The overhead on these stores is very high. Uh, employees are the most expensive thing you can ever hire. They are. Um, They are. I mean, they absolutely are. And from any company, really, you have overhead, you have electricity, you have rent. Rent is pretty much like an employee. Well, rent is less than an employee, but like very close to an employee. And one of the more difficult things that you have to understand is it's a business. It is a business. And card prices change all the time. This is going to happen all the time and it comes to the buyer. So I think this seller, we can demean the seller. We can attack Geek Fortress all we want, but the seller will always behave in this way. This is the expected behavior. You can only see so many Reddit posts about this happening time and time again. The true the true sharks are the bigger companies who have inside information on what's going to be reprinted, what's not going to be reprinted. The new force of will would be reprinted. That's why they stopped buying it. Uh, the new manager would be reprinted. Even if like you thought that they were very good at guessing this, they don't need to guess. Why would they need to guess? Imagine China Fireball for it. just one example. They host all the GPs. They have a monopoly on every GP event. Do you really believe that Wizard of the Coast kept this information away from them when they have a lot of power over Wizards of the Coast? Right? So they are representing Wizards of the Coast because instead of Wizards of the Coast holding its own events, they have outsourced it to one person or one company. Blank, yes, they know this is happening. I mean, it's so obvious when you see market manipulation. Bloodbraid Elf, like, was if a card, an uncommon card, spikes heavy, and the uncommon card has a reprint in Plane Chase, Anthology, Plane Chase, uh, Eternal Masters, I believe it was the most recently, the FNM promo, and the Shards of Alora. And that uncommon is just ticking up, just up, 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 up. And you might think, oh, well, Bloodbraid Elf does that all the time because it's every band card does it. That's not true. Punishing Fire hasn't done that. Punishing Fire has just, boop, no talk, nothing. They don't need to be good at guessing. They already had the list. These god books that have every card and every single set that were given to Guillaume's, and Guillaume used it and got banned for a while, they still exist. And I know this for a fact because some random person can find a ED8 deck. Some random person can get a hold of every mythic and rare, every mythic and every single rare from a set, which Journey to Ixlon, right? A year in advance when they were still, before they were doing Hour of Devastation. Just a random person. You, you have to imagine so many people know this information and 
behaviors, market shifts, what people are putting on buy list, always keep an eye on channel fireballs buy list and what they take out of the buy list. That's the key. Not what they add, but what they take. Because if I see something that is suddenly gone, hmm, reprint, reprint coming. If I see something that they're buying like crazy, hmm, maybe possibly unbanning. Anyway, Jace is very unique because Jace is being reprinted, yet he's going up in price because of the unban. That's such a unique circumstance when you think about it. Because normally when you reprint it, if you reprinted Jace again after Eternal Masters and you didn't unban him, bloodbath. Bloodbath on price. You gotta sell some packs, right? Anyway, that's it. Bye, guys.